times does this happen to you? It's the holidays. For many of us, too many times. And that's why we need to drink. <laughs> I have spent literally decades leading up to the few hours I spent making this drink for this event in life. For all of you, the good people who are here, not those scumbags out there, and let them know. So with that in mind, I present to you a little drink I like to call, baby, it's cold outside. Yeah. <laughs> all, all good theme cocktails have really done fun games, that's us. Okay, so, what do you need to improve your life? Money. And booze. So we're going to start with, as she said, our friends over at Wild Gin. This is the Wild Jew. It's super tasty. Doesn't have that thing with plum gins where it tastes like nail polish remover, uh, which will work in a pinch, but I don't recommend that. <laughs> and we're going to have cider. I uh, like the Martinelli's non-alcoholic stuff because you can also use a non-alcoholic gin with it if you're, you know, happy. <laughs> I don't recommend that at all. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Gonna clear the little space. One for you. Chen Chen. Yeah. All right. You've got your kitchen. You're prepared. You've got your cup. And now all you need is the rest of your community. So let's start with the most important part of this. The thing that makes it my favorite thing. A big damn can of canned oh. jelly cranberries. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> but you have a problem. We need these cranberries out of this big damn can. And that's not possible. No one has ever achieved it in the history of mankind. And as a scientist, and by that I mean a liar. <laughs> and a Texan with barbecue skewers. And an assistant in Andrea, we are going to show you how to get uncanned cranberry schlorp, schlorped out of the schlorp of can of cranberries. <laughs> Insert urethically <laughs> the skewer that you found in the back of that one drawer in the kitchen. Are you ready? Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, that's the sound of flavor in that. More applause. That was great. Okay. I got my glass. I got my. Red yes. But I only need a little bit of it because I've already made most of these. They're in the back. We're going to try them in a second. I need a sliver of cranberry. Just a disc. And then we need a little shot. I love this part so much. Right in the box. Right now you're thinking, you mad genius, you've done it. <laughs> it's perfect. But wait, there's more. Now we're going to add a pre measured four ounces of your sparkly non-boozy cider, unless you want boozy cider, which case goes for that, but you can have more booze in it, and that's good too. We're right on top. And then we need the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's the gym. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One and a half ounces. Try not to cry. <laughs> oh god. Right on top. And we muddle because quite frankly it turns it from this lovely urinal puck of joy. <laughs> to a Christmas delight. It's like red snow without watching some kind of Christmas horror movie. <laughs> chocolate bitters. Chocolate bitters. Oaxacan chocolate bitters. They're just a touch spicy. Just two. You don't want to go nuts. <laughs> Finally, unsprig of rosemary. And that's lovely. Let me check it. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the ship right there. So, so uh, being that we are a news network uh, with a variety of news shows, uh, we, are, we are steeped in current events, uh, much like that. You read through cranberry, uh, I don't think anybody's <laughs> here for that. Um, you never are. Yeah, so we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the news that happened this week, because uh, that's what we do best. So, uh, first up, uh, we, we, first of all, hopefully no one here is a giant Trump fan, because you're about to really hate this part. <laughs> 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 I will refund your money no. if you need no. to. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, which I could say I was. <laughs> uh, later on, I'm going to do the worst Trump impression you've ever seen, so buckle up. Uh, so this week, uh, former President Trump uh, said that he would only abuse his power on day one of the presidency, uh, just just on day one. Uh, he is ready to get back to work. <laughs> he is. He is. He's been doing some stretches, some exercises. Um, you know, what do you... I mean, <laughs> what I think is that if Trump is ready to be a dictator for day one, I really just think that means he, he's going to kill Joe Biden. That's not outside the realm of possibility. Joe Biden is dead. Do we, what are the odds that he's going to turn into a gentle little lamb on day two? Do you think those are good odds? Well, he did cross that fortune teller woman that one time, so it is yeah. possible. Okay. Cinematic. Yeah. <laughs> he, he had her buried in a shallow. Yeah, so. well, we're going to talk about Trump. Let me, uh, let me change real quick. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, we're, we have some merch at the merch store. Uh, you're welcome to do all of your hard work shopping there. Uh, <laughs> if you love that sort of, if you want to see my asshole shirt, John back there has got the hat. <laughs> you can put that on an apron. You yes. can put that on an asshole. Um, uh, There's issues. a teddy bear that'll wear a cute little shirt with mm-hmm. this on it that yeah. you can give to people Not sure. for so many yeah. videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know anybody from Florida, Christmas shopping done. Um, now, I think, you know, I, I think he is not going to be the dictator on day one, and I'll tell you why. Because his list of enemies is so long that 24 hours is not nearly enough time to take care of it all. <laughs> Uh, so I, I think, you know, by lunchtime, he's going to be exhausted. He's going to need a nap. And I just don't know if he's going to get to everybody on that list. It takes me a of time. He's got a list yeah. longer than my dictator, former president. There we go. There we go. I see what you did. that one tonight. It was uncomfortable. I'm going to have to talk to my therapist about that one. Uh, so, speaking of uh, people who would like to be president, there are other people who would like to be president too, namely the GOP field, who had a fourth presidential debate this week. No one knows why. Uh, but the field was whittled down to just four people. Uh, so you had uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, uh, God, who else? Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Points, points. This guy never looks up. He's paying attention to current events. And, and yeah, Ron DeSantis. And when, we, <laughs> <laughs> when they said that those were the four candidates, I was like, weren't those the four candidates last time? But then I remember Tim Scott was there, but he just didn't say anything. So it was like they were just those four candidates. Um, so, curious fellas, who do you think won the debate? Who do you think won the best job? I think that the person who really won the debate was, of course, Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay, and what on earth could make you possibly say that? Because he he gave me personally that that Trump vibe, where I'm like, <laughs> he's coming up here and he's saying a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I don't believe any of it. Or, <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah, it makes me feel like I should vote. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's all it takes. That's all it takes. No, okay. I disagree. I think okay. the winner of the debate was clear. Uh-huh. I mean, we all know why the debates are happening to make money, um, sure. but the winner was definitely Donald Trump once again, Yeah. because after all of that, right. after everything said, mm-hmm. yeah, he's going to be the candidate. No. It's looking that way, uh, and that's, that's gross. The idea, I wish that was a joke. I know, but the idea that you could be a candidate without ever showing up for a debate. 
It's pretty unique. It is. <laughs> it is. It's it's yeah. incredible. Not a lot of people out there doing that. You know what? Maybe him and I won't even have it. Uh, Maybe they'll like just take naps. <laughs> you know, that might honestly be better for I mean, <laughs> Yeah, next yeah. speaks to the American work ethic at 2 p.m. on Friday, and I respect that. But today, I'm yeah. at 2 p.m. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to show up either. But I did <laughs> still want the job and the money and right. the use of power. We had to try to kick and screaming in here, you guys. It was a mess. You it know, was fun. A lot of crockery on the way. So much. Yeah. yeah. I have no regrets. Yeah. I thought you were tired, but you got fired up when we tried to make you do stuff. Uh, there was one person who was not at the debate, and that was Doug Flurgum, uh, who has dropped out of the presidential race. And I know what you're thinking. Who the fuck is Doug Flurgum? You made up that name. I did. That's not a name. <laughs> someone would name someone Doug Flurgum. <laughs> it's something like that. I don't remember the exact letters. Let's not get hung up on consonants and vowels. That was the bad guy in the 1980 Disney movie. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Um, I think I saw that. I think that's all that. I was hoping the kids had to do the dance in order to not have to, so they could go back to their places. That's all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's named after that thing in uh, in the uh, the Marvels, you know, where they like. <laughs> The cat. Oh, not a cat. It's a flurkin. It's a Doug flurkin. I think it's a flurkin in the Marvel universe, and I think he just borrowed that. He's here with the nerd. Anyway, uh, he's not in the race anymore, and I'm so sorry, you guys. I know how much you miss him. I know how much you were longing to have him as your commander in chief, and now the opportunity has passed. So, if anyone needs a hug after. Um, meet me outside and I would be happy to give you a sorry Doug Bergen is not in a race anymore. Yeah. It's nice that you don't make plenty of advances. You don't have anything to do with the rest of the night now. I know. I know, right? Um, let's, let's talk about uh, speaking of people leaving the government. Uh, old Kevin McCarthy has said, I'm out. Uh, he is going to be gone by the end of the year. Technically, we're saying that he's never giving up. We're never quitting. No. And then quit. I yeah. I love him for it. There's a spectacular amount of quitting going on. He got so much Republican Party credit for yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, and now that's gone. Um, he's probably going to land on his feet like a cat that falls off something high uh, because uh, he's real good at money. Um, so I think he's going to be okay. Are you worried about Kevin Hart? Oh, okay. I, I am actually. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, there's like that thing when you get old, you start doing your job. But then you leave your job, mm -hmm. and you just got nothing to do. Yeah. You think he's just going to be bounced around the house? I mean, he wants to be my dancing. Screw with the I don't know. Honestly, yeah. I'm terrified that that's <laughs> going to happen next. <laughs> Wouldn't shock me. <laughs> Would that? not shock me. If he, Started taking some dancing lessons. If he if he shows up in that flamenco studio, everybody panic. Um, I George Santos. Speaking of George Santos, <laughs> great job, Austin. Let's talk about George Santos. Uh, George Santos is on Cameo now. Does everybody know what Cameo is? Raise your hand if you don't know what Cameo is. Word Okay, someone's done now. Cool. Cameo is a thing where celebrities will go and uh, make little videos for people. And so you can send them like a couple hundred bucks and you can have like The Rock send you a happy birthday message or something. Uh, it's an actual business that people do. And so. Uh, kind of. <laughs> I think you might be thinking of OnlyFans. But there's some at the end of this, we're going to send you a full list of all of the drink recipe in online courthouses that you can check out. So don't worry about that. I once spent a very disappointing night in a warehouse. Okay. Is that what we're Typo. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The spelling. Yeah. So anyway, uh, George Santos is 400 bucks a pop making videos for whoever wants one, uh, and that is his new career plan now. He went from being in the House of Representatives to doing this, just... Look, let me, let me be honest with you. He's making more money by sending carriers to people yeah. than he ever did 
then yes. There's <laughs> more money boarding up than, than he's making as a comic. Yes. So he's, uh, he's good practice in and going safe those Yeah. And I think about it. Everybody, Christmas is right around the corner. Hey. You left some shopping off, 200 bucks, and you've got a unique present. <laughs> The weirdest present your best relatives have ever gotten. Um, if you have uh, a relative that you just want to confuse, <laughs> this, is, this is the plan for that. Um, those are kind of the top news stories for this week. And now we need to take a moment and uh, we need to thank one of our sponsors. So we build it, so we do a set read that money. Once again, I ask, how many times has this happened? There you are, sweetly minding your own damn business at a holiday party. You're vibing, you're chilling, and you'd rather be left alone. And what happens? Some cool so-and-so tries to swagger up to you and see how you're doing. <laughs> hey, what's happening? I like your uh, sweater. You mind if I make unwanted physical contact with you? Uh, you're at this party, and I'm at this party, and it's the holidays. But now, there's dismissal tone. <laughs> it's the holiday accessory that invites you to marry Fakarayo. <laughs> Let's try that again. Oh, oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Dis Mistletoe, the holiday weed you wear that just says, have a very happy holidays. But over there. <laughs> Keep going. That's the <laughs> Thank you. segment for the first time on our show last week called This Week in Performing Without Wish. And uh, I don't know if any of you saw it, but it was basically my favorite thing that we've ever done. So we decided to do some of that tonight. Um, we got some things that we are outraged about. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to work through our feelings on that. First up, the word of the year is ribs. Austin, feelings, comments, thoughts. Do you mind if I take this one with my chair? Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Wow. I don't know why it's I have some feelings about the Oxford English Dictionary's word of the year being Riz. Okay. Riz. I cannot believe I'm reading this because it's that important. I cannot believe that such a puerile and filthy word would ever be spoken among polite society. And yes, I did misread that word, thinking <laughs> it was jizz. <laughs> but whose fault is that? <clears throat> Leave it to a foreign Dictionary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To choose a word so close visually to such another word. <clears throat> I do not care to know what a riz is. And there may be children present. Would have been nice. Sold an extra ticket. <laughs> <clears throat> After all, nor do I want to know how a foreigner from Oxford would like to riz, presumably on my face. <laughs> what will the British perverts toss off at us next year? Toss off. <laughs> Cockamamie. Wangle. Tips. All right, all right. That, that's <laughs> asphalt. No, no, no. I'll asphalt your face. So what I'll tell you <laughs> is the fact. What's the charge? That we, as the youth of this country, we 
as the people who really get to, to, to deliver. Deliver what we want. We can riz ourselves wherever we want to go. We can riz ourselves in the, these, the faces of these people who keep trying to steal our language. Why, I say, why? Why does the world have to be the way you want it to be? Why do you, sir, hate America? <laughs> I don't hate America. I just want to raise it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, I think we all feel a little better about that. We kind of got that off our chest. Give us half an hour. We'll be right back. Have a little moment. Um, next up, this this is outrageous. Taylor Swift has been named Times Person of the Year. You guys, you guys, you guys. Okay. Um, Mike, you have some feelings. I do have some feelings. Tell us all about it. Like Austin, I do. I feel, particularly for anyone who is a Swifty here in this crowd, you're all a bunch of bastards. <laughs> and do you know why I feel that way? Taylor Swift should not be the person of the year. Why would she be person of the year? Because she pays her truck drivers not to go on strike, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> There's a reason why I made this woman my arch nemesis back in 2009, 2010. And I'll tell you about it another time. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she did. She knows exactly what she did. <laughs> it's not over, that's all I was going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. All right. And now that you fellas have gotten your feelings in, I guess that's I'm going over to the mic stand because I have shit to say, too. Oh, OK. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. Paris Hilton waited an entire month to change her baby's diaper. That's outrageous. That is outrageous, and I am outraged as a mother, okay? And let me tell you why. There are plenty of things that you can outsource to other people when it comes to babies, okay? Breastfeeding, you know how many tits there are in the world for babies to suck? <laughs> a lot, okay? A lot. A lot of tits out there. Thanks. Holding the baby. Why do you think God gave us grandparents? That's all they want to do is hold the baby. You don't need to hold your baby. Yeah, covered in bodily fluids or gross squirming. No head control. Uh, singing your baby to sleep at night. Um, I'm sorry, have you heard of the entire music industry? Okay. There's no need for you to sing when Mr. William Joel is out there ready to do it for you. Okay? <laughs> But the one thing that you cannot outsource is changing your baby's diaper. When your baby has a fresh one on deck, you should be elbowing people out of the way to get to that melted fun size Snickers bar in your baby's hubbies. You ought to be there first, and it is a shame that she was letting other people do that for a month. Oh, why? Why would you even do that? That's all I have to say about that. When I think about what she was going on, I choke back a little bit. It's sad. It's sad. As a mother, have, I'm sad. I want to have a baby right now. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Don't let society tell that's me. That's why we all have them. I want to yeah. have a baby. Yeah. That's such a thing. That's why. <laughs> we have here tonight with us one. Reverend Mike Dynamo, let me hear it. Thank you so much. I have to tell you, it's, uh, it's amazing to be here. See so many beautiful, good looking people here tonight. Giving us an opportunity to learn just a little bit more about the news, about where we come from, about what we do whenever we see the wrong person in the wrong place. Now I tell you, I've been out here a while. I've been out here just looking around, trying to see what it is that you're really bringing to the tape. Because when you get out there, when they want you to raise on America, <laughs> you tell them hell no. You tell them you're going to do what you want to do. Can I get an amen? amen. I said, can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Now, we are here right now on this Christmas holiday, 
We have come here to find ourselves. We have come here to be ourselves. We have come here to let ourselves go so far out into the world that we'll never, ever let each other down again. Tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Tell me what to do. I said, you're going to go home. I'm going to go home. You're going to pick something up. I'm going to pick something you're up. You're going to be Chef Austin. I am be Chef Austin. You're going to give us something to do. Okay. You're going to let us know that we can't go home if we don't get serious. Because <laughs> when you finally put yourself back, baby, 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 I want you to know I'll be with you too. Can I get an amen? Amen! Say, can I get an amen now? Amen! Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hall